Now, throughout the book of Revelation, we have come to these moments of finale. And we've seen just little glimpses before, but now as we come towards the end of the book, we're treated to a very rich picture of what it will mean one day that Christ was able to say, it is finished. What will it be like when God's perfect plans are finally and fully accomplished? So in chapter 19, we're told that a great multitude in heaven is crying out, hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our God for his judgments are true and just. So he's, he's judged the great prostitute, this Babylon, this city of man, this city of ungodliness, and he's avenged the blood of his servants who have given their lives for his name. And so there's this tremendous voice from the throne which is shouting out, praise our God, all you his servants who fear him, small and great. Tremendous togetherness here in the victory of the Almighty that we're swept up into this. And now we're being prepared for a great marriage. So first focusing on the bride, is, um, let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. And we're told that this linen is symbolic of the righteous deeds of the saints. We think of the righteousness of Christ, who is the Lamb, but then his righteousness is expressed in our lives by his grace in righteous deeds. And we're clothed in those righteous deeds. So we who have turned to Christ for refuge are called the bride of the best of all husbands. And now focusing on Jesus as this great husband of his people, uh, he comes on a white horse and says he's called faithful and true. Everything that you would want a husband to be, he is. And he's proven himself faithful and true in the most challenging of tests, the cross. It says he's clothed in a robe dipped in blood. So he has shown himself to be completely devoted to our salvation, giving his, his life for us. And it says that his, his name is also the word of God. And he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So this is a tremendous victory. And the contrast couldn't be clearer between this prostitute of the city of the world, which is condemned by the Lord God, and his holy bride, Jesus' holy bride, the church. So what a contrast and what a contrast between the unholy trinity of the dragon and the beast and the false prophet and the true triune of God. So we end the chapter with the destruction of the beast. It says, I saw the beast and the kings of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against him who was sitting on the horse, that's Jesus, and against his army, which is the heavenly church. And the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet, 
and these two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. So the destruction of evil and the forces of evil is very much a part of the salvation that Christ has won for us. Lord, as we face the challenges of daily life in a world with much noise, help us to have our focus on you and on heaven and to know him who is faithful and true. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep your eyes focused on God and on Jesus Christ, our Lord. God bless you.